This is the video to cover the enzyme activity lab that we did last week. What I want to do is just cover the main points, review the lab. So let's get started. So first, the key concepts. First, enzymes are a class of protein that serve as catalysts. An enzyme's primary function is to lower the energy of activation of chemical reactions, making the reactions energetically more favorable and thus happen more quickly. The substances that enzymes act upon are called substrates. The point on the enzyme where a substrate attaches is referred to as the active site. Once a substrate and enzyme are bound, they are referred to as the enzyme substrate complex, or the ESC. Here's what the ESC would look like. Enzymes enable molecules called substrates to undergo a chemical change to form new substances called products. Each enzyme acts on a specific molecule or set of molecules called substrates. Each substrate fits into an area of the enzyme called the active site. This fitting together is often compared to a lock and key mechanism. However, the enzyme changes shape a little to fit with the substrate. In the enzyme substrate complex, the enzyme holds the substrate or substrates in a position where a reaction can occur easily. After reaction, the enzyme releases the products and can go on to carry out the same reaction again and again. So the key concepts. During our lab, we looked at three characteristics of enzymes. We looked at their specificity, their optimal temperature, and their optimal pH. Enzymes are largely specific. We talked about that a bit in class, uh, which means essentially that they work well with only one specific substrate. To test this, first part of the lab, we considered two enzymes, the alpha-galactosidase, which was the Beano. That's the enzyme that helps catabolize the sugar found in beans. That sugar is called melabiose. And we looked at beta-galactosidase, which is lactate. That enzyme helps catabolize the sugar found in milk, otherwise called lactose. Remember now, substances which end in ose are sugars, like glucose, sucrose, and fructose. Substances, substances which end in ace are enzymes, galactosidase, amylase, pepsidase. Anabolic reactions are things when you put them together, when you build things. Think about anabolic steroids turning people into big muscly meatheads. And then catabolic reactions break things apart, like catastrophe. So enzyme specificity. So to test whether or not lactate and beano work together only with the specific substrates, we mixed each substrate with each enzyme separately and tested for the presence of glucose. If the enzyme worked on the sugar substrate, it would have broken down the sugar into glucose. What was happening essentially was the alpha and beta galactosidases, if they were put together with a working enzyme, would be broken down into two glucose molecules. So what we did, we took our, uh, our experiment with six different mixtures. We mixed milk and beano, milk and lactate, milk and water, and then we mixed bean and beano bean and lactate, and bean and water. What we found was that when we mixed milk and lactate, that formed a glucose. And when we mixed bean and beano, that formed glucose. But in the mixtures with milk and beano, there was no glucose formed. And bean and lactate, there was no glucose formed. Then we had our controls. The purpose of the control was to demonstrate that it was the enzyme that caused the reaction to occur. In other words, the reaction would not have happened without the presence of the enzyme. Without the controls, we wouldn't have been able to state that. So our conclusion, the enzymes are specific. Lactate worked only with milk, and Beano worked only with bean sugar. So the next key concept was the optimal temperature of enzymes. Part two of the lab demonstrated how enzymes work best at a specific or optimal temperature. We first mixed starch with a pH buffer in three test tubes. The buffer was used to ensure any differences in enzyme activity was due to temperature, not pH levels. 
Each test tube was then brought to a different temperature. Remember, we put one in the boiling water at 100 degrees Celsius, then we had one in the water bath that was 37 degrees, and then we put one on ice, and that was kept at a near freezing 4 degrees Celsius. Once at their respective temperature, amylase was combined into each test tube. Remember, the amylase was also brought to the temperature, so it didn't alter the temperature. Amylase is the enzyme which breaks starch into glucose. Starch is a long chain of sugars. The enzyme breaks it down into the individual glucose components. Remember that amylase is the enzyme found in your saliva. After that, once every minute, we tested for the presence of glucose in the mixtures to see how long it would take for amylase to work at the different temperatures. We had our little drop plates, and at one minute, what we found, or what we should have found, was at 100 degrees, it was starch. There was no glucose formed. At 37 degrees, it worked almost immediately. Glucose was broken down. And at 4 degrees, it yet hadn't broken down. It was still starch. We did this consecutively once a minute. Then at about four minutes, we should have seen the four degrees, the almost freezing, start to break the starch down into glucose. But you'll notice over the eight minute time at 100 degrees, the starch was never broken down into glucose. So the results were amylase worked quickly at 37 degrees, slowly at four degrees, and it didn't work at all at 100 degrees. Our conclusion then was amylase has an optimal working temperature near 37 degrees. And that makes sense because that was the temperature in your mouth. Amylase is in your saliva. So the last part, the optimal pH. So part three of the lab demonstrated how enzymes work best at specific or optimal pH. We first mixed a starch solution with three different pH buffers in three separate test tubes and allowed them to all reach 37 degrees Celsius. This was to make sure that any enzyme activity was the result of difference, differences in pH and not temperature. So in each test tube, we brought to a different pH. One was at 3.0, of that's very acidic, pH of 6.7, which is near neutral, and pH of 10, which is pretty basic. Once at their respective pHs, amylase was combined at each test tube. The amylase, remember, was also kept at 37 degrees. Amylase is that enzyme that breaks down starch into glucose. Remember again, amylase is the enzyme found in your saliva. So once every minute, we tested for the presence of glucose in the mixtures to see how long it would take for amylase to work at the different pH levels. So again, we used our drop plates and what we should have found was that immediately at one minute, the pH at 3.0, it's still not broken down the starch. The amylase at 6.7 did break down the starch and produce glucose almost, almost immediately. And at the basic 10.0 pH, starch had still not broken down. Nothing had changed after the second or third minute. But at the fourth minute, which we should have seen is the basic pH, amylase starts to work. So we start to see glucose. Then again, even after eight minutes, you'll see at the acidic pH of 3.0, still starch had not been broken down. Thus, amylase wasn't working at the pH 3.0. So our results. Amylase worked very quickly at pH 6.7, slowly at pH 10, and not at all at pH 3.0. The conclusion we can make then is amylase has an optimal working pH near pH 6.7. And again, that makes sense because it's the pH that's inside your mouth and amylase is found in your saliva. So overall, enzymes bind with specific substrates to form specific enzyme substrate complexes, the ESCs. Enzymes have an optimal working temperature. We found that amylase temperature was about 37 degrees Celsius. And enzymes have an optimal working pH, which we found with amylase was about 6.7. So considering all this, reflect upon how enzymes work and how specific environments are conducive to working with specific enzymes.